Boom. Good money. I apologize for my tardiness. Um, I was telling my wife, I regret putting it for 10 o'clock on the dot and not 10, 15. I need that 15 minutes, that little cushion. I need that. <laughs> What's happening, good people? Oh, that's good. Hey, Grand Acres. MJ, Nathan, Ali Joe, Place Joe. I know there's two Joe who's equally wrong. What's happening? All right. I wish I could say that I was ready. I'm as ready as I can be, but I need to tweak something really quickly. I, I have to see if I can accomplish this. I don't think it's going to be easy, but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, Let's see here. We're going to right click. Um, it's a ton of tabs. Select all tabs. Bookmark selected tabs. Call that that. Then we gonna do boom dizzle high kizzle. How y'all doing tonight, man? Y'all good? Have y'all been dealing with these uh, solar angles? changing let's do an open all i know i'm slightly annoyed <laughs> with the sun angle changing and i was just telling my wife um the interesting thing about being into solar as a youtube guy hopefully the internet is not bugging as a youtube guy is my stuff is ever evolving this feels really delayed i wonder if it's because of all these tabs loading, which is probably not smart on my part. So I'm gonna try and let this pass. Y'all let me know if I'm having quality issues because I have a bunch of tabs loading right now. I'm going to, let's close this. Oh, not close that. Let's close that. Kill Telegram. Yeah, I'm loving the cooler weather too. Let me tell you something. We got these spotted lantern flies over here, subject to change. And the cooler weather means they 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 either dying or they hiding or something. But they are annoying. It's not as bad as it is in some other places, but it's equally annoying. It feels like we're always dealing with bugs. All right, what's up, Delgado? Silver Surfer, less stuff, more freedom, living the van life. What's happening? Hey, Sharp Farm, I'm glad you made it. Um, 9 p.m. in Texas, not too bad. I dig that. Um, okay, why well, isn't I've eaten collard greens and bacon? <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, we loading up. I think we're good over here. Let's do some sharing here. Make sure I share the white window. What is this? Hmm. Oh, I was looking at some other stuff. Some other stuff you can kill at. We're going to do a presentation. And then we're going to share this one. Hopefully, this works out for us because it is a private window. So I'm not signed in. So it, hopefully, it shows some semblance of the prime deals. Let's add that to the strizine. All right, first up, I tried to put these power stations in order um, to like highest price to lowest price. So we're starting off with the all powers. Let me just say first and foremost, if you use any of these links, shout out to you because that supports the channel. Um, I get like a few coins. If you guys use my Amazon links and that's any Amazon link uh, at any point if you buy something now. The other thing is that I'm not particularly co-signing on this. I don't know if y'all know this, but I come from this from the angle of a shopper just like you. So I'm looking at these devices, kind of looking at the options, the features and things like that, and kind of weighing whether or not it's interesting. And then you guys will have some different takeaways. Hopefully I found some decent deals. I am also open to your deals that you may have found that I may not have found. So feel free to share. Now, this one is the all powers 
R2500. I've been looking at this one kind of interestingly because I do have somewhat of a relationship with all powers, but it's kind of on the lower end, I suppose. Um, excuse me. But I don't think there are many videos out about this joint. I, I don't even know. Well, when I looked into it before, I don't even think it was available. I think it was available for pre-order. But this is like your typical, like, you know, 2,500 watt, 2,000 watt uh, inverter, 2,000 watt uh, battery capacity. You can see it's listed here for $1,599 with a $300 off coupon. Let me just um, check that to make sure I'm not missing anything. So there's a coupon and then this uh, extra 20% off. So I don't know what that would come out to be. You guys can't see that. Um, too well dang this is gonna get confusing i wish i had three monitors at this point i only have two all right let me get let me get organized here are we back so i don't know that's actually interesting so the the com the compelling thing about a device like this is it's a newer device it's not like the Acatel and the ace bolt where they start to dip around eleven hundred dollars twelve hundred dollars nine hundred ninety nine dollars this is going to be an up-to-date device from a company that has a good reputation. All Powers is kind of good. They're, um, what I would liken them to is maybe like Hyundai. Because when Hyundai first came out, they were really inexpensive cars, um, it, which I imagine you have to do to kind of get your foot in the door. So you make like cheaper vehicles. So some of their portable power stations of the past were not the best quality. They were still solid, but I feel like they're getting a little more polish to their power stations. So this one is interesting because it's going to be a newer device. It's going to have a lot of the typical features. Don't quote me on any of this, but I'm sure it'll have app control and UPS. And it's going to be LifePo and all of that jazz. So it's an interesting thing compared to something like the Acatels or the Ace Volts or the FF Powers of old, where you know they don't have app connectivity. They don't have... Um, I think they have UPSs on those joints. Yeah, they have UPSs. Um, I guess the main thing would be the app connectivity that some of those devices are going to be lacking. But for around this price, it's something that's interesting in my mind to consider. Let me look at some of these uh, features. Nothing really. Okay, yeah, keep appliances running, blah, 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 blah. The interesting thing about this one compared to some of the other ones is I think this is going to do XT60. Solar input is going to be interesting. This one also has a one of those little RV outlets on it, which I think is cool. I need to see if it has as the UPS. Yes, XC60 for sure. I wonder what the solar input is on this. If it's just going to be 500 or if it's going to be something fancy. That's a lot of reasons why I don't like these Amazon listings because they don't always put the most pertinent information on there. So I'm trying to see what the... Uh, Okay, so 2,000 watt max input, which is probably going to be from the wall. Let's see if the solar gives you. So it could take in 1,000 watts, which is actually cool. I've been comparing it to the Acatel and Ace Volt and those style of devices, and they typically max out at about 500 watts. So this one doing 1,000 watts is actually interesting. I wonder if it's one connection or two. Speaking of that, I need to figure out this other guy's channel. All right, I should be showing this. Why am I not showing that? My bad. This is what it says here 1000 watt max solar input let's see and then we have specifications do they have the solar voltage range oh wow so this one's 12 to 150 volts that's actually really good with a 20 amp max a thousand watts is not great but i mean the fact that it goes up to 150 volts is actually really nice I've actually been thinking about that lately because my AC200P from Bluetti has 150 volts, but it's all—it's almost like kind of useless to me because it maxes out at 700 watts. So when I'm sitting back there kind of contemplating, okay, what am I going to do with these panels for the winter? I'm running into this problem where I can't do a whole lot. And what I mean by that is like I can't rearrange things basically because that's the only device that I have that goes up to 150 volts. I just have to keep that one the way that it is. I'm going to move the panels over to the left side of the yard 
uh, where the trees were and all of that jazz. And then I'm going to just have to kind of make it work. But I was kind of contemplating, okay, what would it be like if I did, you know, three of my 40 volt panels? And then it's like, dang, that's three, six, nine. That's actually not bad. 900 watts, but it maxes out at 700. And that's actually honestly not bad at all. But it's just the limitation of it. I can't put four in series and I can't really do. That's what it was. I wanted to do a series parallel. So two in series, two in series, and then put those in parallel. And then I would have 1200 watts of solar, but I maxed out at 700 watts. So it wasn't really a whole lot of, because I can't do more than three panels in series. So if I could, I couldn't do four panels in series if I wanted to. I'm starting to learn that the limitation of having the 150 volts, unless you have dual MPPT charge controls like the AC300, it's not great either. But you know, we've gotten to this place of 150 volts, and which kind of shocks me about Anchor because Anchor is still sticking at that 60 volt. Anyway, that's the whole thing that I feel like I have to talk about on another live stream. But it just 60 volts is just like. It's a very interesting. Um, I was talking with Seth Tight about this. It's a very interesting voltage. I almost, I really like what Petron is doing with the 95 volts of solar input range because that's really useful um, versus the 60. The 60 is very limited. But anywho, planes on a snake, right? So this is an interesting device, especially I'm looking at this in. I see two coupon options. I see you get $300 off, and then there's an actual promo code for another 20% off. So you're getting down to, I don't know if they take the 20% off of the 1600 or the 1300 So you're like 1300 and then you take off an extra, like, what, 260 1300 130 yeah, like, uh, yeah, 260 So that's like almost $1,100 for an up-to-date kind of state-of-the-art device. It's pretty interesting. Speaking of FF Power, Ace Volt, Alcatel, this particular device caught my eye because it is $949. And the benefits that this joint has, I, I feel like it's going to be fairly similar to the Ace Volt and Alcatel. It may have XT60 instead of Anderson. Um, let me see here. The reason why I bring that up because it's a newer updated device and what it allows for you to do is to change your charging parameters. So I have a problem with my Ace Volt and my Ocatel because if I use them to charge anything of significant power draw and I want to put more power into it via AC and y'all know I have all of these power stations but only certain power stations have the two kilowatt, the 2000 watt inverters. So I can't really charge it from everything, which is why I kind of like my AC200P having a 400 watt adapter, because then I could charge that up via more things. More things have a 500 watt adapter on it than not. But with something like this particular device here, you have a situation where it has this little variable knob where you could tell it, hey, use 500, use 300. And you could see here, it goes all the way up to the 1100 watts. Ace Volt, I could tell FF Power, some of those older style devices. I think FF Power may have updated it. Theirs, um, Jason Oy did some videos on some more up-to-date ones that do have the switch. But this having the switch is a good medium between having app control where you could get in the app and control the solar, solar, the AC power coming in. Right, right. So that's interesting. Thousand bucks. Um, I can't, I, I wanted to see what kind of port that it used, even though that's not as important. It's either going to be XT60, XT90, or Anderson. Let's see here. It doesn't show me. Where is it? Is it over here? Okay, that, yeah, that's Anderson. It's Anderson solar input. Let me see what's the solar input on this. Because this one might be 500 as well. Let's see here. Does it tell us? I don't think it does. This is why I hate some Amazon listings. <laughs> uh, let's see. Life pole. Uh, it does not say. Son of a blues player. Okay. 
Nope. And I ain't going to the site. No, am I missing it? Is it right here? 12 volts, 25 amps. So this is probably, wait. Oh, no, 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 that's output. I'm sorry, that's output. Yeah, it doesn't tell you the solar. Dang it. It doesn't tell you the solar uh, input range on it. So it's either going to be 12 to 50. I'm tempted to say this is going to be 12 to 50 volts. But if it's a little bit higher, then God bless them. <laughs> All right. Let's let the show go on. Hey, Ann. Auntie Blessings, what's happening? I called you about two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. You just crossed my mind. I was wondering how you were doing. So I rang your line. I rang your line. What's up, John? Good to see you. The OG River unit is under $200 on Amazon. Yeah, but the new one is $180. It's on the list. It's on the list. I'm actually thinking about giving my uh, my OG River to um, someone. I was going to give it to somebody else with a couple panels, but they were like, ah, I'll be honest with you, I'm probably not going to use it. The thing that I probably would have used it for, I went another direction and so on and so forth, like friend of the family type stuff. But then I met up with another cat, you know what I mean? And he's like into the action. So I was like, oh, bet. Maybe that was always for you. So I was talking with him and rapping with him about it. Um, so I'm trying to get him. I sent him a message on Telegram. I was like, yeah, man, I, I got I got some panels and a power station for you. It's like to get you hooked. I mean, introduce you to solar. Because <laughs> once he get in, he's going to be in. It's going to be over. <laughs> but I was just explaining to him that my OG River, it has, it has been hammered. <laughs> so the capacity is not what it should be. I need to do a capacity test on that. That would be a cool video. I think I am going to do that. If I if I get to a place where I actually give it to him, I'm going to do a capacity test on it and make a video out of that before I pass it on. Um, I actually would like to give him something bigger, but I was talking with God like, man, so what, what, what should I do? Should I give him this one? Should I give him something else? And then like something else is going, it's going, it's not going to hurt. But it will be something that I use. So anyway, I don't want to get distracted there. But anyway, that that the OG River, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a nice device. That's for sure. I be seeing them on sale in my local area from time to time. Like somebody may have a Pro or a Max, which I don't like the Max. The battery with the uh, joint just didn't work well for me. And I had like two of them. Um, so I'm not convinced on that end. But it's a nice device. I dig it. All right. Now, this one is in here just for pure humor because uh, <laughs> now this is not fair because I only really am familiar with one person who has it. Setai has this big blue device. I think he got it off of the Kickstarter or the Indiegogo, and he's had problems with it. That's for sure. But I think it's an interesting device. I was never crazy about this screen. The screen just looks like it's trash. Um, I'm sure it's useful, but to have all that empty space on the front was just odd to me ever since I saw it. Interesting device, but he's had issues. I think he was saying his UPS was slow and the joint didn't. It, 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 he had his modem on it and it wasn't fast enough to keep his internet going. So his internet kept dying. It was just a whole thing. It was a whole thing. So that one's kind of there for fun. This is nothing new. Uh, the AC 180, we did a whole live stream about this one. This one is on sale for about $50 cheaper than it usually is, which is interesting because. Um, I, you know, I don't need to delve into this too much. The EcoFlow, when I did that video, the Delta 2 was on sale for $6.99, and now it's $6.80. Now, I don't know if they've improved the fan on this one, but that fan is a problem for me. It may not be a problem for you, but it's $680. I think this is a, a grand time to be getting into solar in these power stations because, like I said, during the Anchor versus Blue Eddy CL1000 versus B AC180. You could get 1800 watts for less than a thousand dollars, less than 800. And this that's crazy, that's crazy for somebody coming in just trying to secure their um, you know, secure their lifestyle a little bit. And you don't have to spend a whole lot of coin, that's pretty cool. 
Now the U Green is also on sale. I think Jason Oy did a video on this one. I don't know much about this one. I'm always looking at these bigger devices to see which one is going to put bi-directional charging on this dip. And the U Green does not have it, but it has everything else. You know, you got LFP, you got app control, you got uh, I think you have a USB. You may have a pair of USB 100s. I can't really tell what's going on here. But, you know, it's like standard stuff. Now, I want to know, would you guys, what would, because I, I know people buy this device, but I don't know why people would buy this device. And I'm not even throwing shade at you, Green, because, you know, people are interesting. You know, not everybody wants to buy from the big three. Uh, not everybody cares about getting with a big name. It's just like, oh, I like that one. It looks different. Oh, I like that one. It's from a different company. Oh, I like that one. I like Ugreen. Ugreen has a good reputation, so on and so forth. I'm sure they have sold some of these devices. I just wonder who is the kind of person that buys a Ugreen instead of an EcoFlow or a Blue Eddy. That's an interesting. If y'all have any thoughts, please feel free to let me know down in the um, comments because I'm curious. This one is also $800. Now, this Vito Man, we start to get into the realm of like budget power stations or more budget friendly power stations. Because if you look at the watt hour capacity here, you're looking at $799. And then this one jumps up to 1500 watt hours with a 1500 watt inverter, I'm deducing compared to something like the U Green, which is 1200 watt hours, I believe. No, it's 1000. 1000. <laughs> I guess that's fair. It's 1024 or a thousand watt hours, which is the same as you got the Eco Fluence a thousand, the AC 180 is a thousand, give or take 1100, 1100. And then you got that Vito Man, which typically has some uh, some options on there where you could like jumpstart your car battery. Typically, I don't know if this one has it, but there's another one in there that's called like the Vito Man Jump. So that's an interesting thing where you could get 300 extra watt hours from a lesser kind of known brand. And I wonder if that's feasible, but it's an interesting device. I haven't done a whole lot of research on this. It's just a deal that caught my eye because you're getting more capacity for the price. Actually, the oops. I know I think it's pronounced Opez or something like that. The oops, which I have one. I have the 1800 watt joint, which I really like, by the way. Um, I'm still testing it, but I really like it. It has an 1800 watt inverter and it's right around this particular range of the Vito man was about 1500 watt hours of power for about 799. So it doesn't now the oops doesn't have any fancy anything. It's just straight up like. I wonder if it's actually on. Where's my freaking. I wonder if it's actually on sale here and I'm not going to check. <laughs> To be honest, I guess I could check on my my other window. Let me let me see. Give me one second. So I'm gonna see if it's on sale. No, it's like barely. It's barely on the Amazon website, barely. But it says about seven ninety nine. So. It's just a it's a very comparable device where you don't you don't have all the bells and whistles, but you have a situation where you're getting more watt hour capacity for a little bit less money. I'm sorry, you get more watt hour capacity for about the same amount of money as you get going with one of the big, you know, EcoFlow or Blue Eddy, which I think is interesting. And people buy those devices, you know, they be watching them YouTube folks and just pull a trigger and don't do a whole lot of research, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know how this this stuff. I'm really intentional with my research, so but everybody ain't me. So this is the other one I was telling you about. 1800 watts, which is interesting. 799, but for the same amount of watt hours. I feel like this one's probably a 1500 watt inverter. Let me make sure. Because anytime they have 1500, yeah, it's a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter right here. Um, but this one is an older model and it has the same amount of watt hour capacity, but with a larger inverter for $7.99. Would you pick a Vito Man 
or a oops or something like that or a, you know a ff power or that eco play joint i just mentioned a minute ago it has a variable knob would you pick that over you know an eco full delta 2 for like 6.99 or a ac 180 from blue eddy what would you do let me know i'm curious i'll check the comments in a second now i don't know much about the anchor devices i don't pay very close attention to them um, I'm not exactly sure why I was trying to get a grip on their particular lineup a few months back. I didn't have a whole lot of success, but this is another one that F1200. It's about the same price as the AC 180, 799. It's actually 699. Um, so it has about 1200 watt hours of power, 1800 watt inverter. It's actually doing a little bit better on the specs. I think the solar input on this one is going to be not weird, but kind of in line with the AC 180. So it's about 500 watts. But I think it's going to be 60 volts at, uh, th I think there's a push for, uh, what's the word? Parallel. There's a push for parallel instead of series because it's going to have a 60 volt joint. Oh, look at this. This one is not even that great. It's uh 300 watts max solar charger. So that, yeah, that's that's whack. Um, this is why I don't really be paying close attention to anchor products. Now, there's another device that's actually very interesting. It's coming out on Kickstarter soon, but it has 240 built in. And there's only about three power stations that have 240 like built into the device where you could go from whatever RV plug directly into if you have something that takes an RV plug, you don't even want to talk about my situation because my situation, I live a thug life. Um, but I could power my whole house off of something like that if I went directly into my dryer plug, whatever my dryer, not my dryer, my stove plug is, which I wouldn't do, but it has that option. So this one's kind of like a non-starter for me at 300 watts of solar charging because it has a situation where it's basically... A comparable price for the same amount of storage, but you're not dressed, man. What's up? Uh, I prefer you guys to hang out upstairs. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Didn't mommy tell y'all to drink water before y'all went upstairs? No. Did y'all ask mommy if y'all could come downstairs? No. Okay. I feel like y'all need to go back upstairs. Unless you need something. What'd she say? She said yes. To get a couple of balloons. Okay, well, go ahead. Take your balloons and get. Go on, get. What you need? I want to get my water. Hurry up. Get some water. There's a lot of crumbs on the floor. What, you, what are we supposed to do? Either I got to walk through them or you got to walk through them. <laughs> so, anyway. For this amount of coin, for similar watt hour capacity, eh, you know. Now, was this the one that had the two 100 watt uh, PD ports? I don't think, I think that's the 767 that has the two uh, 12 volt outlet joints. Then I think it has two 100 watt PD ports. I wonder if it's listed here. I could look at it real quickly. Of course, it wouldn't be. Uh, no, here it is right here. $13.99. Let's take a look at it. So 2400 watts. And let's see. Let's see. These are some terrible pictures. <laughs> all right. All right. I think what it say here. Man, these Amazon listings, man. You can't rely on them. I'm telling you. I'm pretty sure this one has better solar input. It's going to be something along the lines of like 500 watts or 600 watts, which is still not a lot. And then Anchor will have the nerve to be talking about expandability. And it's like when we really start to deal with expandability, I never come from an expandability mindset because the amount of solar you could get into these power stations compared to the amount of watt hour capacity you can have when you start to expand a power station it doesn't make any sense the only people who kind of get it right is blue eddy with the ac 300 and the ac 500 because they have those dual mppts but if you got 1600 watts going into the EcoFlow river the EcoFlow delta pro 
and then you throw like two batteries on that and you're getting 1600 watts compared to um 3000 let's just say it, that's another 3000 watt hour battery 6000 watt hours and you're getting 1600 watts it's like it only really makes sense if you're gonna plug that dip into the wall to get power have a generator to get ac power in an emergency situation where you could charge it up quickly because solar is not gonna cut it and the reason why is because typically just walk with me here if you have like 1600 watts of solar and you're typically pulling in about 1200 watts nine times out of ten you will be the kind of person who will use somewhere close to that amount of power unless you're like just a, a person who puts it in the closet and doesn't use it you pull it out for emergencies but if you use your eco flow i think about my man jc diy i hope he's doing well i haven't seen him around um i started to message him tonight to just check in on him um but if you're going to run like a, a air conditioner or your fridge or, you know, something that really takes a good bit of power, you're really using your solar that's coming in to supplement that load. And then once you get more watt hour capacity, that solar that you had coming in to supplement those loads, you're kind of used to burning through that solar. So then you have to adjust your, your usage all over again. And that's fine. We do what we have to do out here in these streets. But just that amount of solar just is not it's not ideal if you have a situation where you got six thousand watts ten thousand watt hours six thousand watt hours ten thousand watt hours with sixteen hundred watts of solar coming in in a situation where you using five to six hundred watts to run your house three to four five hundred watts to run things in your home it's just it would it, you never get it full and i'm not saying that the goal should be to get that dip full that's a whole nother conversation. But um, yeah, anyway, it's an interesting thing. All right, let's see what y'all snapping and trapping about for a second. All right. Okay, we got that. We got that. I think I said hi to Delgado. It's good to see you. Um, I'm agreeing. We'll bring the cool, get rid of the bugs. Yeah, for sure. Cool and dry in Utah. Minimal bugs. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. What's up, uh, Chase of Simplicity? I, I don't quite recognize the name, but you couldn't comment if you weren't subscribed. So I appreciate you. Good to see you. If you love the 40s, I'm excited about fall and winter garden. Oh, really? they have to look deeper into the solar tilt. Yeah, it's not anything. They just need to go taller. It's, it's not deep. Um, I'm on the Georgia-Florida border. So temperature is good. Hey, I dig it. Good evening uh, from Southern California. What's happening? <laughs> the OG, we talked about that. That's a good point, equally wrong. <laughs> That's a very good point. And I'm going to get to that in a second because there's some interesting things kind of going on with all powers. I don't know if they're true, but we're going to talk about it. But that's a good point. I just got the all powers 100 by folding panel close to 12 by 8 inches i never have a good that's actually not bad it must be a, a multi like fold um boom 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 booms sorry i missed that thanks for checking on me hope Dell and fam are well it's all good yeah it's all good <laughs> so the will get you <laughs> for sure what do you think is the greatest deal on accessories i didn't see a whole lot of deals on accessories but i don't know what it is you guys kind of need you got the delta 2 today nice now that fan is crazy that fan is bananas and let me know please message me and let me know if the fan is any better because that fan is bananas and then what happens is like the people who review no knock on the people who review the joints but um because i know it's hard to swing back to stuff that's why i love shorts somebody gave me a hard time for shorts they were like yeah what's up with you with all these shorts are you gonna make videos or shorts i didn't even want to tell the person that a short is a video because that would just be being technical but i got the point i got the point they were a little crass about it but it's all good um but a lot of times you don't get many updates on the devices. I'm guilty of that too, but I still, I use my devices. So if people have questions related to them, if I haven't given them away, then I at least have them. I actually need to follow up with somebody on the Gulu because they were saying that the Gulu is turning off on them after about four hours of use. 
And I thought there was a low power mode that was supposed to help with that, but maybe it's just for low power devices like little, um, I got something around here somewhere. Like little Bluetooth adapters like this, which don't take a whole lot of power to charge. So you turn on low power mode so that stuff like that will actually charge and get the power in. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's keep let's keep uh making progress here. Let's see. Delta stop it. <laughs> What's happening? You bought the AC 200 Max today for 1400 That's not bad. That's not a bad look for that. That's for sure. The AC 200 Max, man, I'd, I'd like one. That's for sure. The 900 watts of solar has me like, eh, just in this current like state. But, you know, we talked about multiple devices tonight. What are they sitting at? 1,000 watts of solar, 500 watts of solar. The AC 200P is 700 watts of solar. So getting 900s, like, eh, you know, that's not bad. And then some of the best of the best, they only jumping up to like 1600. And to be honest, unless you want to over panel, even when you buy 1600 watts of solar, you're only going to get like, um, let's just call it 320. You're only going to get, uh, what, 1600 minus like 1280 or something like that. I think that's right. Yeah, about 1,280 watts. So you're not even going to get the full 1,600 unless you kind of buy more panels and put more panels together and figure that whole thing out. But I dig it. I take an AC100 Max in a heartbeat. All right. All right. I was going to get the Delta battery also. Hobotech said he wouldn't get the battery. He would get two Deltas because the battery is basically useless. Yeah. That's a good point. I've never been a fan of the batteries. I mean, I get it in a particular situation, but I'd almost always rather have two devices over a device and a battery, especially those EcoFlow batteries because they are pretty much useless. I love that uh, Blue Eddy has their expandable batteries have actual ports on them. They can charge from solar. They can charge devices out with. They can be used separately. And then Pecron is also doing really good with their uh, expandable batteries where they can take solar in and a good amount of solar, too. I think those tips can take in up to 400 watts of solar on them. Just crazy. It's dope. Anyway, let's see here. What's up, Al? Smoking tea. I think I, I saw a comment from you recently. The name jumps out at me. I like some things different. Like I have the Grow Up Portable Power Infinity Power Station. In fact, it's like $800 something right now during the Amazon deal. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. There's people who like stuff that's different. They don't want what everybody has. I get it 100%. What's up, Black Palmer? Good to see you, man. Uh, AC200 Max, you'll love it. Did you get some expandable batteries also? Eh, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it's got shares, I believe, also. <laughs> Not in the budget, but I did grab another 400 watt in solar. I know the 400 watts in solar to add to the 200 watt panel I got. We're going to talk about panels, too, because there's some interesting thing going on going on with panels now. Does Blue Eddy Latest have the 35 watt minimum, 35 volt minimum input? Not the AC uh, 200. The AC 200 Max, I'm sorry. AC200 Max does not. That's the limitation of the AC200 and the AC200P. That's another benefit to having an AC200 Max because you could put a single panel on it. So, yeah, that was always a good look. Question. If I put two panels in parallel equals 120 watts each, will that, will that, total, will that equate to 140 watts total input? If I put two panels in parallel, into what device? Or is that in series? Or is that an in series question? So really simply stated, parallel combines the amps and series combines the voltage. So if you have two panels in parallel, 120 watts each, then that's what, 240 watts? Did you mean to type 240? That's 240 watts. I imagine if there are 120 watt panels, they're probably about five amps. Give or take, maybe like 5.7 or something like that. So you got 5.7 amps times two. 
or 5.7 amps plus 5.7 amps. So you're looking at about 11, 12 amps. So that's what you're dealing with there. If they are 12 volt panels, which typically means they're about 21 volts or something like that. And if you put them into series and you'll have a 42 volt panel and it'll still get you the same um, amount of power. So it's just they both do the same thing to get you to the number. They just do it different ways. One combines the amps to get the 240. One combines the volts to get the 240. So it would be like uh, 20 volts times 10 amps or 40 volts times 5 amps. So it's the same. It, it comes out the same way to get the 240, but it just depends on it. It is... Uh, it is what it combines. And then if you have a power station that can't take in that higher voltage, you can fry it. So that's why some people have to do parallel. And then in some instances, you have to do parallel. And then you have something like the EB70, the EB120 that has a parallel limit or an amp input limit that causes you problems anyway, which is why I can't use the EB120 like I want to because it has a 10 amp limit. And if I have 10 amp panels, my 300 watt panels are like 40 volts by 10 amps. They're like 36 volts by like 9.7 something amps. I can't put two of those in parallel because it will be 9.72 amps plus 9.72 amps is 10 amps <laughs> because it's going to max it out at 10 amps. Oh, I forgot to mention that I got to grow up because I love the anvil shape. Yeah, that is weird because it looks like um, it's wearing a hat. <laughs> My gula is still great and I have two of them. Now, subject to change, does it turn off after four hours if you're using something on the 12 volt? I actually had something weird happen on the 12 volt. I tried to use my 12 volt on the Gulu with like a normal inverter and it didn't work. And during the video, I also pointed out that the Gulu's voltage ran kind of high. I think it ran at about 15 volts or something like that. So it's an interesting thing. I still use it, but I only use it for USB. Um, it runs my lights by my door. It has 900 watts, voltage open circuit, 10 to 145, 15 amps. Thanks, Plan B, Orchard and Farm. Plan B, Orchard and Farm, do you have a channel? Because that's a very interesting name for some content. Plan B, Orchard and Farm. That's an interesting name. All right. Sleeper, what's happening? <laughs> Sleeper, it must be like, what, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning? Hey, Katie, that's funny. I just read this person's name and I was thinking about if they had content. And then I thought, oh, I wonder if Katie's Camp Kitchen is around. Katie's Camp Kitchen has a channel and she makes videos about like cooking on portable power station and maybe some like outdoor -y kind of stuff. But mostly what I've seen is cooking on portable power stations. I think I was over there recently. And you were talking about making something. Let me know what your latest video is about, Katie. Wayne, what's happening, sir? Delta 2 and extra battery are from 1099. Oh, interesting. Yeah, somebody was telling me about that. They said that they got a deal on the Delta 2 and an extra battery for about a thousand bucks. And I was like, wow, I haven't responded to that comment yet. But that's a good look. I mean, if we, so this is this is how complicated my life is, right? You look at this from Wayne. He's saying that the Delta Two and the extra smart battery for ten ninety nine from Home Depot. Now, y'all know earlier I just said I'm not a fan of extra batteries, right? But if you could get an extra battery and a power station for a grand, I think that's worth considering because essentially what you're getting is you're getting like. 50 cents a watt hour, which is some of these bargain basement prices for a top three power station. And I think that that's very interesting. I still don't like that the battery is pretty much dumb without the main unit. Because if you have an issue with the main unit, then you got an extra battery that is basically toast. Now, EcoFlow does have, I think they have the five-year warranty on this device too. I know they have it on the Delta, the River series. But they should have it on the Delta series. So that gives you some peace of mind. But if you have to ship that dip back, which is what you have to do with EcoFlow, 
then your extra battery is useless. And I think that that's stupid. I wish they would improve that situation. They really should. All right, all right. And you said the a barrel, a a barrel I could tell is two grand. I don't know much about that one. I don't pay attention to the Alcatel big devices. Let me see what these churn is doing. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Do you? I feel like just drop them in the living room and keep the noise to a minimum, guys. Y'all need to be slowing down anyway. Any hoot. Wait, wait, wait. Cat eyes. What's happening? How are you in the family? Good to see. Wait. Hey, how are you in the family? Hope to see. Hope. Good to see today. Question. Which one is better? The Delta 2 or the Blue Eddy 180? That's a good question. I'm going to always knock the Delta 2. I, I hope Anne, when she gets the Delta 2, she can tell me if the fan still sucks when you charge it from the wall and when you charge it from solar. My EcoFlow River Max, my River 2 Max, the fan is, it's pretty awful. Um, <laughs> it's the main reason why it's not in my zone one. So I think Jason Noyes said that the Delta, the, the Delta, the River Pros fan is better than the base model rivers or the non-pro model rivers. But um I mean I think they're I think they're head to head, to be honest. One has eight millimeter connectivity, the other has the XT60. Uh the Blue Eddy has the eight millimeter, the EcoFlow has the XT60. Um I kind of like the form factor of the AC-180 a little bit better, but I like that narrow design as well because it would fit into a couple like nooks and crannies a little bit better. I don't think the EcoFlow has... Does the EcoFlow Delta II have wireless charging? I don't think it does, but I don't know. Excuse me. That's a that's a good question. That's a tough one. They're so comparable, with the um, exception of the fan. They're incredibly comparable. It also matters what you have in your eco system already, because if you already have eco for products and you already got a you know you got extra cables, um, you got the app that you can manage it from. Depends if you want diversity of offerings. Like if you have EcoFlow already, maybe you want to try Blue Eddy. I just I think they're very comparable. And then that Anchor C1000 is very comparable as well. I don't think neither of them have a light. Uh, maybe Does the EcoFlow 2 have... Um, I don't see 8... What's 8 millimeter? 5521 here. I'm just pulling it up right now. I don't see 5521. It has the outlets on the back, which I think is interesting. No, wait, 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 wait. Now, Wayne just talked about the device, the joint being on sale at Home Depot. Now, if you asking me $699 for the Delta 2, $1,099, $1,100 for the Home Depot joint or the AC 180, I'm going to go watt hour capacity all day and just do the Home Depot deal. I don't like the fan. If the fan is still loud, that would be a serious situation for me. But what I did with my EcoFlow River Max 2 is I just pulled it out of my living room and it's fine. It's by my door getting some power off of a 300 watt or 290 watt 40 volt panel because it has a 50 volt input limit. It doesn't get as much power from it as it as it could if it's ideally it, it it'll max out sometimes but it doesn't max out often so it doesn't matter to me um so yeah i hope that kind of answers your question i was looking at the 2000 area which is the best deals i'm not sure but i talked about a couple of things that i saw somebody said they got the ac 200 max for 1400 
I think I've seen an AC200P for like as cheap as 1100 Actually, Light Harvest Solar had it for $800, the refurbished one, um, with free shipping. So that's a thing. Uh, I don't know. Oh, it's 345 Man, I appreciate you hanging out, man. Hopefully, you don't have to work in the morning. <laughs> I would double check my Gulu, but so far, I've had no problem with them turning off. Yeah, mine turns off. I'll have a light on it. Uh, which is a small amount of watts, but it turns off for sure. And I tried to put two lights on it, two USB lights, so I could get it up to about 10 watts, and it still turns off. So every now and then, I just have to turn it back on, and it's after about four hours. So it's an interesting thing. Clam chowder, that's what it was. Made with an induction cooktop and the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. Boom. Katie's Camp Kitchen has a video about cooking clam chowder. Um, if I could get the video, let me see if I can get the video link. One second. Oh, they updated the man. Listen, I saw something about a device and I'm just like, dang it. Because one of my devices stopped working. It's this joint right here. I bought this off of, uh, uh, the marketplace. Let me get this link real quick. So here you go. Y'all check out Katie's camp kitchen video. She had a good, a really good video about the induction cooktops. And it I learned something about it from, from her video where some devices, like the device I have is actually right here. I've been using it a little bit. The duck's top. I'll show you. This is my duck's top induction joint. Um, this one has like a variable output type of situation, but what it does is it, um, it's called the duty cycle. Shout out to set type. So it just, it pops on the power and then goes down. That's how it controls the temperature. But Katie had one in her video, uh, that had a set amount of power you could set it at, and it was a little bit lower. I don't remember all the details. Maybe she can fill us in in terms of if she remembers how much power that induction cooktop that she had. Um, but it was an interesting video. I was like, dang, man, I think I picked the wrong induction cooktop. I should have got the one that's like one that she had. So I learned something from that video. I shared it on the community tab some time back. But the community tab is it's, it's a little fickle. It doesn't really like videos being shared to it, it seems like. It just doesn't work well. But anyway, back to the lecture at hand. We were looking at videos. Also, veterans get a 10% discount on top of that price, so it brings it down to $949. Hey, that's Wayne's the plug. I have the AC200P I want better. Okay, interesting. So you have the AC200P and you want better. So that one's limited. It has to be put in series for it to work. It also has 700 watts of solar. It also only has a 60-watt USB-C power delivery port, six outlets. I'm looking at it right now. It's right next to me powering the live. How much power do I have left? Holy smokes, it's 5% left. Let me charge this up. Y'all let me know if this fan is too loud. Y'all may not hear it anyway. I actually have it charging from a battery that has about 50% charge. And I have my Best Tech inverter connected to the battery. And this is another benefit. I got the Best Tech inverter. It's a 500 watt inverter. The plug for the AC200P is the quiet 400 watt joint. Now my wires get a little bit warm, it's concerning, but they've never felt like hot and they've never burned and I've run it for over an hour. But I can actually charge my beastiest power station from a little 12 volt, 1000 watt hour battery and a 500 watt inverter. I think that that's dope. Just real life application. Dang, that fan turned up, jeez. Y'all let me know how that sounds, because it don't sound good to me. Um, the battery has to be LFP for me all the time now. It doesn't matter how cheap. It's got to be LFP. I dig it. Thank you so much for always answering our questions. You're very knowledgeable, you and your wife. Some of you and your wife is all okay. Oh, awesome. You must be using voice. 
That's what it is. It's voice to text that's what's going on over here. All right, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, your wife is awesome. We appreciate you. I, I appreciate that, cat ass. Sound is okay. Thanks, Plan B. Um, okay. Better. That's an interesting thing. That's a very interesting thing. I don't know how it would go better. Let me let me think about that. Y'all think about that too. What's better than the AC200P other than the AC200 Max or the Blue Eddy AC300? I love the AC300 because of that dual MPPT. Now, it depends on what your solar situation is. What do you want better for? Because 2,000 watts, 2,000 watt hours is kind of a bit of the industry standard in terms of having a good power station that can pretty much run the things that you want. Now, 2,000 watt hours is not a whole lot, but it's a good pairing. When you start to try to do better than that, you ever think about doing an all-in-one in a battery, a five kilowatt battery? That would be better. It'd be different, but it'd be better. That's something we're considering. And the stuff, that stuff is cheaper. It costs about as much as we pay for 2,000 watt hours and 2,000 watt inverters, you could get like an all in one for like $800 and a five kilowatt 48 volt battery for about $1,500, $1,600. So you just spent like two grand, 2,200. And then you got five kilowatt hours of battery capacity. And you'll typically have like about a 3,000 watt inverter, but you don't get nothing else. You don't got no AC. I'm sorry, you don't have any DC charging or anything like that, but you can make that work. AC 500 or 300. Yeah, I was talking with Ann about that. Ann was trying to like save money on her joint, on her bill. And it's like, well, maybe we need to start thinking about battery storage and like just manually charging and, you know, uh, electric rate arbitrage, which is to charge up your stuff when your rates are cheaper and then use that power. And then you got solar too as well, which could save you money. So it's an interesting thing. 300 the ac 300 deal is for about 2200 dollars that's actually really good um i've been seeing it as cheap as like 25.99 so to get it down to 2200 during these deal days it's actually pretty good <laughs> that fan sounds like it comes from mars <laughs> now which fan can you hear my fan because i don't want to hear this fan during the playback that's for sure it's going to annoy the crap out of me. Some of y'all may be more in understanding than I am. So let me see what my battery capacity is at. I'm getting about 300 watts. I think I'm going to just, I'm going to tough it out because I don't, I don't want to have to deal with this during the playback. So we just, we got 6% left and we're using a hundred or so watts. That should be fine. That should be fine. Worst thing. Worst case scenario, I can plug my computer into something else, which I don't have nothing else. I've been struggling solarily around here. Um, a lot of stuff is not charged, but, you know, winter sun, right? <laughs> all right, all right. It has an inverter in it. Okay, we're talking about your your um, induction cooktop, I believe, Katie. It has an inverter in it and has levels for 600, 900, and 1500 watts. So it can be run with a smaller power station. It will run at step levels also if your power station wattage is between. Interesting. Okay. Um, Plan B Orchard and Farm is saying that the 300, the AC300, and the AC500 from Bouletti qualify for the tax credit also. That's interesting. Prowse says that 300 is better than the 500. I wonder where he came from. That sounds kind of familiar. Do you ever get afraid of your panels getting stolen from your yard? I, I think the good Lord, <laughs> every time I open my back window or something and my panels are still back there. Now, I'm not terribly afraid because I have bigger panels out there and they're heavy. So you got to be kind of committed like you read about to get in there and really pick up those panels and walk away with them. Um, and they're also connected in various wires. I have thought many times about how to secure them a little bit better. I don't know if Kensington locks would work because they're made for laptops and those little aluminum frames on those uh, solar panels, they're not, 
they're not hitting on nothing. Um, yeah, they're, they're not. <laughs> you could probably just yank a, a Kensington lock. But I thought about going to Home Depot and seeing what kind of like cable options they have that would possibly fit through those aluminum frames. But again, I feel like if you gave that aluminum or whatever that metal is a good tug, whatever is in it would just come right out of it because it's very soft. The thing that makes those panels feel as sturdy as they do is the aluminum in conjunction with the glass. I've had panels that had the glass shattered and that aluminum is like just dealing with like a picture frame. It's real, it's real flimsy. It's not super flimsy, but it's not strong either. And if you grab it really good, you could just lift it right up. If you grab it on the edges for most of them, at least the silver ones. I haven't messed around with the um, black ones, but I feel like the black ones are probably just painted or powder coated or whatever. But um, I don't worry too much. Anything is bound to happen. We don't necessarily live in a high crime area. Um, you really have to kind of come to this area. You have to have a reason to come to the area that I live in. It's not like secluded or anything, but there's not very much reason for you to you know, dip down and drive through and come up and come to my area. I've talked about this multiple times. Now, one thing that comes to mind for me always is my neighbor, he kind of does a kind of work that has a lot of people kind of in and out of the community. I worry about that because, you know, you know how that go. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but it's an interesting situation because then you get more eyes than you would naturally have on a situation if he didn't do the kind of work that he did. So, yeah, I think about it. I do. And I certainly do. All right. This is a good time as ever to get back to some of these deals. We talked about the U Green. We talked about these. Anchor. We even pulled up a bonus. This is the Anchor Solix C1000. I have a whole live stream on this one, but it's pretty much the same as the Delta II, and it's the same as the Blue Eddy AC180 with some slight variables here and there. Um, now, this is interesting. The EcoFlow River Pro for $400. It's a $440 with a $40 coupon. If you guys follow and saw the community tab posting, Costco had it on sale for $3.99 as well. So this is nice that Amazon is matching. So you don't have to worry about a membership or anything like that. You could just get it for $400. Now, Jason Oy did say that his pro, um, the fan was quieter. I think the pro does have the whining noise issue, but maybe it's not as bad as my EcoFlow River 2 Max. But I like this device. There's some other devices that are on sale, but none of them really can compete with this joint having 756 like, watt hours, 768 watt hours for about $400. I don't know if that's a good watt hour um, deal. That's about 50 cents, I guess. So yeah, that's pretty good. I think that dip retails for what? What does it retail for? Like $5.99, $4.99, $4.49, something like that. It's an interesting look. I, I'm impressed. I wish it took in more solar. I wish it could take in about 400 watts of solar. Um, I talked about this recently on another live stream. It's interesting because the base model can do um, like 100 watts of solar, 120. And then the mid-tier one, which is what I have, can do 200. And then the pro model can do 200. <laughs> And the bottom one can only take in about, uh, it can't do the high 50 volt input limit. The mid tier and the top tier can do 50 volts. I just think it would have been nice if that EcoFlow River Pro would have been able to work perfectly with EcoFlow's 400 watt panel. That would have been dope. I don't know why they didn't do that. I don't design power stations. What do I know? All right, all right, all right. Speaking of grow watt, this is another thing that make me came to that made me come to that conclusion. This is not the uh, super anvil hat one. This is the smaller one, but it's three hundred ninety nine dollars. But then it's only five hundred and thirty eight watt hours. You compare that to the EcoFlow, it's like eh. I will go EcoFlow, but the EcoFlow may not always be on sale. All of this stuff is relative for me. It's especially based on need. So if you have a situation where you're trying to get a power station and the Eagle Floor is not on sale and the Grow Watt goes on sale more often, maybe you find yourself buying a Grow Watt. Maybe. I wonder what the solar input is on it. 
It's probably nothing crazy. I wonder if it has bi-directional charging because the EcoFlow does have bi-directional charging. I do like that they put that in there. Speaking of it, this tip is 180, nothing crazy. Uh, I think the base model looks kind of cheap. But it is on sale. But for $200, you should just double up your coin and then get the fruit. That's what makes sense to me. It's like, why would you spend $200 on this dip? That dip should have been like one and some change or something like that. Speaking of one and some change. Oh, no, we have this one. I was shocked at this one. The Jackery, I mean, it's, the price is not fantastic or anything. It's fantastic for Jackery. Maybe I should change that word. It's not necessarily fantastic. But it's pretty good for Jackery because this is the life pole one. The biggest issue that we've had with, with Jackery for all these years is the fact that they never embraced life pole. Now, this thing is looking a little sparse on the front. But look at this. This is interesting. It has an in and out USB C port and it has an out only USB C port. This is actually really impressive for a power station of this size. This is the type of stuff that I've been looking for. And I hope Jackery brings these kind of features to their larger power stations because that Jackery 300, which I have right here, I have to box it up and send it back to them. I hate returning stuff, man. I hate it. Um, that one had some features on it that no other power station in their line had. It was the best power station that they made in their entire line for the longest time. It's the, it's the only reason why I have one. If that one wasn't as nice, I believe I got some help from one of the viewers to buy one. Um, I wouldn't have bought one if it didn't have that particular feature set. And kind of if I didn't have the help, I believe. I think I got some help on that one. But this is, I'm really impressed with this, guys. Like, seriously, I don't like the fact that it only has one outlet. I think that that's kind of ridiculous. Even like the old model has two. But the fact that it has a bi-directional port and a non-bi-directional port, once you get more than one power station, I don't know if you guys understand how annoying it is to only have one bi-directional port. Because if you have multiple power stations and you want to charge up a power station from a power station, I have to look and see what the solar input is on this. That's going to be interesting. Then those devices start to have problems with like which one charges the other one. The good thing about the EcoFlow second generation is bi-directional, but they have programmed into the firmware that it defaults to give power out. It always tries to give power out by default, which kind of solves the problem. But Jackery having a bi-directional and a non-bi-directional, I think is dope. That's what I see here. I could be interpreting this wrong, but that's what that looks like to me. Now, let's see. I think, oh, you know what? No, 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 no. I think the interesting thing about this joint, I'm not saying that this is not true, what I'm looking at here, but I think this joint only charges via USB-C. I'm pretty sure that's what I remember Hobotech saying. Let's see here. So it says deliver only four hours taken, blah, 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 from the Solar Saga 100 watt panel. Additionally, the dual PD ports, 100 watt input and output. Oh, that's interesting. Look at what we have here. It says one 100 watt input and output and one 15 watt output. What does that mean? I'm getting confused here. Does it, is this trying to say that? Because you can see here that there's a 15 watt USB port. So are they saying that both of these are 100 watt joints and the 15 watt that they account for is this? This doesn't make sense. I'll figure it out at some point or if someone y'all figure it out, let me know. Okay, long lasting. I'm trying to see what this solar input is. I think it's 100 watts. I see that you also get a, oh, here it is. You got a DC7909 to USB-C adapter. Very interesting. I don't know if y'all can see that, but that's interesting. Hmm. Let's see what they got down here for us. Yeah. 
and I'm pretty sure 288 watt hour capacity, 300 watts output power that you have to go from eight millimeter to USB-C. But y'all can watch maybe Hobotech's video. I know Hobotech's video is going to be a little long, but um, I know Jason Noy just did a video on the bigger one, not the smaller one. Let's see. Four ways to charge. USB-C car charge. Yeah, look at that. Can you see that picture right there? That's some weirdness happening <laughs> in that little... That's an eight millimeter joint going into a, a adapter and it's going into that second port, that input and output port. Uh, AC input, DC input, USB-C, 100 watt max. So yeah, that's interesting. 100 watts into that is actually nice. I'm not complaining. It's an interesting little device. I'm, I'm, it's interesting. Now, I want to talk about this one. In order to talk about this one, I gotta go find this guy's channel. I just want to give him a shout out. Let's see. All powers are 600 phage. 600. Here it is. It's Solar Gen Fan. He has a good video on this. Now, he doesn't appear on camera. But he talked about this device. And what he does is he he basically does this, which is not as engaging. I think it's going to stop his channel from growing because people need to connect with a person. Like faceless channels can be hard to get off the ground. So he has a lot of hurdles. But I did watch his video on this one. This one is supposed to have, per him, a quieter fan. But it's also not supposed to get in as much solar power. I think he was saying that it maxed out at 210 or 220 watts instead of the 300 watts. And then whenever you see the 400 watts on here, that's for the AC. But it typically has, oh, look, look, it's right here. Solar inputs, 220 watts. And he was saying that the fan is supposed to be quieter. Now, I should email All Powers to see if they'll send me one of these so I could see if it would, uh... <laughs> so if I could, so that I can see if the fan is quieter. And it actually hit me that if they sent me another one, I would probably put those two panels and one of these together and give it to my man. Um, Cause that would be a good one to have because he can put those two panels in series. He ain't got to worry about parallel. And then this little joint is a beast. And then it will be LFP so he can have the cycles to hammer on and all that jazz. It's an interesting thing. And that all powers is nice. The fan was a, a problem. And the fact that it didn't have bi-directional USB-C was a bit of an issue for me. I don't know how I feel about this beige color, but you know, it's interesting. I'm glad to see the 220 watts here. But hopefully the fan is quieter. And then you got the original. So this one, look at this one says upgraded version. I wonder what that means. Oh, look at them stunning. <laughs> Super quiet portable power station. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is hilarious. I, I hope it's true. I hope it's true. Dang. $190 with a $20 coupon. Wow, so that's getting you down to 170 and then this one is 215 with a $40 coupon. And it says you can get an extra 10%. That's crazy. I feel like y'all should buy some of these. To have an extra power station, even if you use it just to charge it from AC to deploy to power a lamp or a TV or something like that, I love these little 300 watt hour power stations. That's not the most capacity. But that capacity gets you by. You think about it. My son, um, my youngest, we have like a little Samsung TV right here uh, and his Xbox. So it uh, uses about 70 watts. Let's just call it 70 watts against a 300 watt hour capacity. That's about two and a half hours. Maybe a little bit longer, 70, 71, 40. Yeah, maybe about three hours of power. And that's 70 watts. Like, that's a good look. So 300 watt hours, it's not a whole lot of power. Before light loads, it can run those light loads.
for a respectable amount of time, especially as it relates to, you know, just keeping yourself entertained. Now, I like low power usage devices. My TVs are all TCLs for the most part, with the exception of a couple of Samsungs that we got off of the marketplace. Uh, most of our TCLs we got off the marketplace. Um, we bought one straight up, but the two that I have over here that are 32 inches, that I got them off of the marketplace for like $40 and $60 maybe, maybe $35 and $40 or something like that. And they use about 15 watts. So my 32-inch TCL uses about 15 watts. So I can run both of those for about 30 watts. Or I have my big TV in the living room, which is about a 50-inch TCL 3 Series, I believe. It might be a 4. But it uses about 40 watts. So I always think about that. It's like, man, I could run two TVs for 30 or one TV for 40. I'd much rather use my 32-inch TVs. Like what I used to do back in the day is I would use my Samsungs to watch TV because they use so little power. But they're 24-inch Samsungs and they use about 15 watts. But then I got these 32-inch TCLs that use about 15 inches. So if I ever had a situation where the power was out, those 32-inch TCLs, I would, we would watch TV off of that probably first and foremost before we watch TV off of our bigger TV. Because 32 inches is fine, man. It don't, it don't, it's fine. Now, with me having as much solar as I do coming in, I probably wouldn't mind just using the bigger TV because it's already in, a, in the living room. But if stuff got interesting, then, you know, if you got to be really intentional on an overcast day, then maybe it's the 32-inch that gets used. But anywho, let's see. Those three, do you ever? Okay, we covered that. Let's go back to this. Those three, my 60s are kicking my butt. The sun keeps moving and my house is in the way. <laughs> Welcome to winter sun. And it gets it gets interesting. It does. The Jackery 300 was a good price too. This one, the new one or the old one? The Jackery 500, well, which one? Because he, yeah, you, you got to be careful with them. Is it the new 500? Do they have like an LFP 500? Delgada? Oh, okay, you're talking to L Smoke and I have cameras pointed at my panels. Me too, I do. Um, I have I have a panel pointed out in my backyard. Question, does that AC180 have bi-directional charging? Bi-directional through USB-C? No, it does not. No, I don't think any of them have bi-directional charging. Nine hours charge, 40 watts. I'm not sure what that's in reference to. Uh, that's old boy's video. Okay, cool. UK standard R600 charging, 300 watt. Okay, cool. All right, let's get back after it. We talked about that. <laughs> Upgraded version quietly. This is interesting. The Golabs i200. I think I saw somebody. Oh, this is refurbished. I'll take this back. Um, yeah, I wouldn't buy that refurbished for $100. It's a nice device. I like it. I don't use the AC on it. I mainly use it as a light in the room for my kids. Sometimes I turn it on its uh, side so that the light goes up. And it's actually really useful. But um, one thing that I don't like about it is the USB ports don't have a button. They auto sense. So in order for, cause my kids listen to, um, I'm sorry, I had this up the whole time. My kids listen to the Bible experience at night. If you guys are believers or just curious about another way to consume the Bible, because you're curious about the Bible, the Bible experience is really nice. It's an audible kind of experience. You can listen to it on YouTube. It's performed by a bunch of notable like black actors, voices and artists. Um, it's really cool. My kids listen to that on an iPod touch, one of my old iPod touches. And so the iPod touch is always plugged into the joint. So when I have my kids go and I turn the uh, power station on to turn a light on for the night, the little night light, because the port is auto sensing, I have to unplug the wire and plug it back in for this to start to talk, charge the iPod touch. And as you can imagine, an iPod touch has not been sold for a very long time. So that battery is not great. So it needs to power. It being auto sensing is a little annoying, which brings me to <laughs> I was working with Ellie Conta. They said they were going to send me um, this one, but 
they never sent it. So I was interested in this one from the perspective of this device is interesting. It's very, it's like a, a step back in time, but an updated step back in time. When you think about something like the Bowdens or something like that, I think it has bi-directional charging over here at 60 watts. It can also take in a hundred watts of solar, I believe, from the 5521 ports over here. I think these are 5521. And it's only $103. I thought that was very interesting. 200 watt hour for 100 bucks. I think this is perfect for like little kids to get them own, get them their own little power station. I don't think you can beat this price. There's been some other power stations that have gone on sale for a little bit cheaper, a little bit closer to this price point, but this is very compelling. I don't think you can see usage here for how much power is going in and out. I think it just shows you the percent. So it's a very limited device, but it's still very intriguing to me. And it is super tiny. I was like, look at that. <laughs> I When they first asked me about it, I mentioned the joint. I was like, man, I don't want no 200 watt hour joint. But I had to think about it. And I saw um, somebody do a video on it. I was like, man, that thing is tiny. I would consider it. And they were supposed to send it to me. And then, they, yeah, you can see it's bi-directional here. They were supposed to send it to me. And then they kind of like didn't. I could follow up with them, but I ain't pressed. I'm already behind on videos, like super behind. I'm behind on product videos and I'm behind on regular videos, like just lifestyle stuff. It's getting to the point where I'm going to have to get these videos out really swiftly before the seasons really change. So for y'all who rock with me, the next few videos that y'all see coming out that are not product related, they're kind of from an earlier time, but I think they're still interesting. Some may make the cut, some may might not make the cut because after a while, when I'm not in the flow of making videos, videos seem kind of like irrelevant to me. It was like, oh, well, okay, that was back then. Is that really relevant to now? It doesn't feel that way, but y'all help me be the judge or something. I'll, I'll still put something out as long as it edits well. All right. Now, this is another device I came across. It is very similar to um, the Bowdens that I have, the Sevcoms that I really enjoy. And it used to be um, the Sateki, but I had two Satekis that died on me. So I, I can't really vouch. I hope that this one has the light on the side. And the reason why I grabbed this one, because if it has the light on the side, let me see. See that joint right there? I love that. I turn this device, I use it as a light in my room, my bedroom. I turn this device on its side and then I let that light just go out into the room and it actually lights the room up really nicely just as a little ambient. And it's not like dim or anything, at least the one I have. So this form factor is actually pretty cool. It's a 60 watt joint, about 240 watt hours, I think. Yeah, it, it comes under many brands. Energizer has one, Sevcoms has one in this particular store. Uh, Defisi, Khaleesi has one. So it's an interesting device, 100 bucks. Panels. All right, these are not in order, any particular order. I don't think so. This is interesting. These are like the older Renergy panels. And the, the reason why these caught my eye is because a lot of you guys who are into panels and stuff like that, you're still buying like 100 watt panels, 200 watt panels uh, off of Amazon that are typically sitting at a dollar a watt. I think that this is really compelling because if you're used to spending a dollar per watt, this is a little bit less than that. So you get two, three, 20, 640 watt hours for about $568. It's a little bit less, which is actually pretty good if you're in that particular market for buying new panels that get shipped to you. Now, these panels are a little bit older. Um, <laughs> they are nice size. They're about 66 inches by about 40. I have one of these panels. I paid about $240 for it. It was new, but it was from a person. I think I paid $250 for them. But then you contrast that to the idea that you could get used panels. And I'm hard uh, pressed to find used panels in my market. It's getting a little better now but you could get a 300 watt use panel for about a hundred dollars. And a lot of people tend to sell those little yingling ones for like about a hundred bucks, uh, which I think is kind of interesting because they only cost about 50, but they may come out to about 
75 70 after you ship them somewhere but this is interesting now there's more energy panels in here but i think this stuff at a dollar per watt is very interesting for you guys to consider if you just want to be able to buy some panels for about what we used to spend for 100 watt and 200 watt panels anyway i just think it's it's peculiar so then you have these two Renergy panels that are on sale that are interesting. It's about seventy dollars, uh, sixty-five dollars actually. Is that right? Sixty, sixty-one, twenty. Yeah, sixty-five dollars a panel. That's the cheapest I've seen a Renergy panel. I bought a, a single Renergy panel for one Black Friday deal one time for sixty-five dollars. These one hundred watt panels are getting really inexpensive, and I love it. So you can get two one hundreds. I'm not a fan of one hundred watt panels because they're a little bit of a pain compared to just having one 200 watt panel because you can move a 200 watt panel a lot easier than you can move two 100s but that's my take you know just here to offer some insight here <laughs> but that's a good price for a, a main a name brand now those panels don't necessarily perform crazy uh they like any other panel for the most part so yeah I actually saw a bunch of panels that were on sale uh, about a week and a half ago. I made a bunch of like joints and I was going to do a live stream about that, but I just never got around to it. Uh, this is interesting. This is kind of along the lines of what I was seeing panels for. So you got an eco worthy 100 watt panel for $55. That's not bad either. Another brand, two 100 watt pack, JJN. JJN is an interesting brand. I don't know much about it, but they're kind of like newer panels. In terms of being like on the scene of panels but they were like the first bi facial panel i saw on the marketplace that was actual decent price but the reviews weren't all that great i don't believe but it was only like three so it's kind of hard because some people can be ridiculous as it relates to how they review stuff but this is an interesting joint as well you're getting both of those for like what about 53 dollars i'm sorry like 56 57 dollars 57 would be a correct so 57 for a jjn which is not a known brand versus like 140 132 for renergies so yeah i would probably go with the renergies but maybe you get these if you like the look of them well, another thing i would do is i would look at the um measurements on the panels i would compare those because if the jjn's are a little bit smaller maybe a little bit lighter that could be a better situation for you than going with the renergies so something to consider something that i would consider all right let's keep the party going oh i'm gonna put links down in the description of this video if you guys click on any of those links whether it's the device you want or something else you're looking for and you buy something youtube amazon will throw me some coins so you know it's not a whole bunch but it all adds up if you're into supporting the channel in that way we got the eco worthy a 200 watt panel for 123 dollars uh, i think this would be interesting for you and but i also think you should probably try to find some bigger panels but bigger panels are heavier i get that but i think you could manage a 200 watt panel on your um joints and you could have about 400 watts of solar that you could move around relatively easy i'd imagine i don't think these 200 watt panels are too heavy um let's look here if i can see some measurements uh i saw something here it's about 26 inches by 58 so 58 and 26 is about normal for those tall um 200 watt panels that's not bad now this is incredibly interesting check this out so you know the other energy panels were five what were they five 68 i'm glad that's dope that i hit that <laughs> joint that well these are interesting as well because they just came out Renergy just came out with new 450 and 550 watt panels, but now they have new bifacial 450 and 550 watt panels. These are their bifacial panels for 640. That's a four, two 450 watt panels. This is bananas. To have that to be shipped for Prime, I don't know if it's going to be fast or not, but I'm pretty sure you're not going to have to pay. Let me check. 
because I am still logged into my account somewhere else. Let's see here. So free inside entryway delivery as soon as Thursday. You want to see this on the screen. It's on my other. As soon as Thursday, October 19th. That's bananas. I don't think I could emphasize how much, how crazy that is to be able to get that amount of power and buy facial for that price. That's just, let me find my window here. That's crazy. I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I don't believe I'm tripping, but that's 900 watts by facial. So you're going to get a little more power if you angle them a certain way. Now, most people are not going to mount them, but maybe you're the kind of person who mounts them. But to get that amount of power, that is incredibly tempting. Not to me, because at the moment, I don't have $640 to spend on something like that. And I got more than enough power right now. But it's a very interesting thing, man. I would love to. That's actually a bifacial panel kind of close by that I want to um, entertain buying. But yeah, I was saying like if I get to the point where I could get the amount of money to grab it, um, then I may go and grab it. But right now, I don't have that amount of money. <laughs> But this is bananas. All right, I got to move on. But I, I can stay there for a minute to talk about how good that deal is. Let me see what y'all snapping and trapping about. Not much going on. I need one more system. It's got to be XC60. I have five or six cables. I'm not buying anymore. It has to be XC60. That's not hard to come by. I want those panels, but I'm the one who has to move them around. I'll stay with the folding. Now, and I, what I want you to consider is that if the panel, if you feel like the panels are heavy, then get a hand truck. You don't have to lift them. Um, yeah, that should be fine. You could even take and put some, uh, you could get some pool noodles to like wrap up the hand truck so it has like softer spots on it. And you just roll it right up, pull your panel onto it, you know, disconnect it and all that jazz and just move it where you need to. You shouldn't be moving them multiple times a day i feel like at the most once i settled into a good system i mainly needed to move my panels like twice now i wouldn't recommend moving them that many times and bothering with hand trucks and things like that but i feel like if you needed to have a more vertical during the winter in a certain spot of your yard and then more like lay flat in the summer in a certain spot of your yard then this i think it's worth it but I dig it. You know your limitations. You know, you know what it's like. <laughs> you know how you be out there chasing the sun. So I, I, I ain't mad. I ain't mad at all. I think I talked about that. The all powers you showed on sale for two fifteen. Oh wow, dang! So now we know at least with this one that the money off and the promotion, the coupon, the percentage gives you. That's a good look. And just consider 153 dollars is about my impulse range for a purchase especially for youtube but because i have like a relationship with them i wouldn't buy it but 150 dollars 200 dollars for something that i was really curious about i would kind of spend that 150 dollars ain't that's pretty good i don't think you could beat that 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 device is dope. It's loud, but it's dope. And this one may not even be loud. Sheesh. I'm not gonna buy it, but I'm telling y'all, if I was in a position, that would be something that I would be incredibly interested in. I'm just saying. If you are interested in it, use my link. How about that? Let's see. The last time I bought rich panels, nothing but broken glass. I was upset. Um, I get it. Two times a day if I want energy. That makes sense. Yeah. You typically, you, you know, you need them for east, south, and maybe west if you could manage it. But mainly, the, the about twice a day is, is cool. All right. What we got here? What we got here? What's up next? So then we got some 550s that are bifacial. Um, that, that price is not as great to me. And I'm not going to math right now. But... 550 watts. It's about 1100 watt. 
for almost a thousand dollars. Yeah, I think the four fifties are the better deal. Um, let me make sure this lines up with the price over here. Yeah, there's nothing special going on there. That's six forty for nine hundred. Feels better. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> That's why math is so important. <laughs> All right. Now, a lot of people enjoyed the short for the All Power 600. Let me minimize this. Now, this is 672. I've seen it for a lot higher. You can see it right here. It says 899, which is a crazy price. But this is another one that has a coupon and also has a 10% promo code. So that's interesting. I, I think the cheapest I've seen this is like 499, which ain't bad for a 600 watt panel. Um, actually, it's really good. Even six ninety two, this price right now is actually really good. But All Powers is a more budget friendly brand, um, so you kind of you know. But a portable panel is really a situation where you know you only use it when you really have to. I hammered my All Powers two hundred watt panel on purpose just to see how long it would last, and I'm starting I'm starting to kind of see some degrading in the PET covering because it wasn't ETFE. They say this one is ETFE, but it's ETFE without the, the Manny Fresh uh, sound. <laughs> that's a that's a long story. You had to be there. But, um, you know, you scratch on something and it makes that sound. That's what the ETFE panels sound like. I wish I had something around here I could grab. Maybe I do. Hold on one second. Un momento, por favor. This is a Foxion um, little folding panel. It only has a USB A port, but it's ETFE coded. And this is what I mean by the mini fresh sound. <laughs> yeah, I know that song. Where you from? It's, it's vulgar, but that little sound is what I'm used to ETFE sounding like. They say that panel is ETFE, but it doesn't have. Uh, it does not have that coating on it. Now, I'm not saying it has to have that coating on it, but you know that's what I'm used to ETFP panels having. So 692 for 600 watts. That panel is it's actually a very like um, manageable panel for as much power as you. I shouldn't say power for as much rated output as you have on that dip. It's. I think it's a really good look for like a look, man. I got 600 watts of solar in the summer. I'm going to go to the park. I'm going to bring this so-and-so power station, and we're just going to hang out and have a good time and get some solar in. We ain't got to worry about power for power and certain things, sound system, you know, a little TV or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I just think it's dope to have that much power in a folding panel. I think that's incredible. I'm going to circle back to – let's talk let, – let, let's pause for a second because I want to talk about these bifacial panels. I was talking to Settite about this. The thing that I'm so excited about with the biofacial panels, one thing I'm not excited about is the fact that they're heavier. But what I am excited about is what we've accustomed, what we've gotten accustomed to, especially if you have panels and you're dealing with real world output, is a hundred watt panel is not gonna give you a hundred watts. Good day, you should get like 80. Great day, you get close to a hundred, but I never get that much power. I feel like I gotta be in like Vegas or something, or um, Arizona to get as much power as I get. But I think with these bifacial panels, the idea that you could have a 100-watt panel and possibly get 100 watts or maybe a little bit more is dope to me because I feel like I uh, that's all I really want. I, I want this idea to think, okay, I got a 200-watt panel. It's a 200-watt bifacial panel. I might actually get 200 watts from this. I think that that's incredible. So I'm, I'm excited about the future of panels being bifacial. The only downside is that they've been heavy. And we were talking, me and Sete were talking about this idea that maybe they don't put glass on the back. Maybe they could put something else because it's not exposed to direct sunlight. So it doesn't have to be as robust uh, uh, a covering as glass. It's also not as exposed to the elements. So again, it doesn't have to be, have to be as robust as glass. So... I'm excited about that. I wanted to take a, a pause there for the cause. Now, okay, 
the all power 600 and then their 400 is interesting um we join prime okay so it's showing 699 but you could get it for 499 and then there's a 50 dollar coupon so you're 450 and then you take an extra 10 percent off there's what about 45 dollars um so you're getting this about a dollar a while which i think is interesting one thing that i didn't like about this particular panel is is a 400 watt panel for five panels i was like eh, i'm not crazy about that it makes me wonder if it's because they got really good output in the videos that i watched so it made me wonder if it was really a 40 a 400 watt panel but i think they're like 80 watts each or something like that um which makes sense <laughs> but i thought they were kind of like fudging the numbers there like giving you a 500 watt panel calling it a 400 watt and then it's performing really well kind of managing expectations and then exceeding those expectations it's interesting uh this is interesting another dollar a watt solar panel the nurse nurse v um they actually reached out to me i may see about getting this 200 watt panel from them they were talking about a 100 watt panel and I, i'm kind of not interested in 100 watt panels that much but i thought about it and if i you know get a 100 watt panel and then give it away to somebody in the community then that's fine too but i'd rather get a 200 watt panel because i am down a 200 watt panel because my all powers is degrading on me not their fault i hammered it it was out there for 365 days a year for i should say about good a good at least 12 months and i'm sure it was 18 months and you know those panels are not for permanent deployment but i dug it out just to see what would happen veto man has a panel out here for you know a, a modest 350 dollars for 200 watts interesting something to think about i thought that caught my eye this one is not great ebl doesn't jump out to me as being a a brand of panel that should be at the 156 dollar mark but you see we have a $20 coupon so it drops it down to about hundred and what thirty-six dollars that's okay folding panels used to be about two dollars a watt but now they're dropping down significantly lower so you can kind of have your pick of the litter so to speak on folding panels so I don't know if you have to go EBL to get a good deal but you can find like the yard go was like 156 or something like that I wonder what it's hitting for now I'm not going to explore it and this is interesting i love this little panel um for a hundred dollars it's typically this is another um style of panel that is progressed down in price i guess a regress in price 109 dollars for a 100 watt rigid i'm sorry flexible panel is really good because they typically sit at about even when they're on sale they're like they could be like 150. um i have one of these panels I prefer it over their white panel because this one is actually more flexible than that one and it feels more rugged. This is another panel that I held outside for a very long time just to see if it would degrade because the only testing that we have of these panels is when Will and others used to use those older style panels and they would degrade after a while because they would typically put them on like RV roofs and things like roofs, and thing roofs, RV roofs uh but this one is it was holding up well now it's hard for me to judge how much power it should be getting i actually need to entertain getting one of those like lumen meters so that i know how much power the sun is producing per meter squared i don't fully understand it but dealing with 100 watts and like a thousand watts and 200 watts you could kind of 100 watts is easiest because if you're getting 400 watts I don't know how it works Setai knows it better than me he has like a weather station that tells him but i think if it's if it's like four something per meter squared then your 100 watt panel should be getting about 40 watts something like that it is because it's tens it's very interesting and easy to kind of apply what you're getting per meter squared to your panel and what your panel should get per meter squared so it's an interesting thing but i like this little panel this black division it's nice it's good and flexible its wires are interestingly spaced but i like it 100 bucks for something like that is really cool i think we have more 
Do we have more panels? Or are we just getting into batteries? Okay, cool. We covered all the panels that I came across. Some very good battery deals out there. I'm kind of below through this one because batteries aren't really all that complicated. Um, so you have 279 with a $40 coupon, which is actually really good. Now, I love the mini batteries. I actually have a Redodo and a Power Queen right here. I need to make videos for those. Um, they're going to be more creative videos than anything. So I'm kind of slow on that, but um, I made shorts about something or another. I think it was for the Power Queen. I love those mini batteries. These are the slightly bigger batteries that we're all used to. But for 200 and what? What's that? $240 for 1,280 watt hours of battery capacity. I still owe y'all a video about how to easily charge these. We're going to talk about that a little bit here. But I need to put a video and get that on wax so that it's out there for the viewers who would be interested in that. I need to do that. Speaking of their mini battery, this is it. So it's $299 minus $40. So it's $260, which I think is this form factor. I, I love it so much. It's so nice. I don't even know if it's that much lighter, but it's, it's so dope. I'm just, I'm, I'm a fan. This is the Redoto one that I have. $230. Listen, I don't care. We're going to talk about some ways to charge it, but even if you are not in the market for one of these batteries at $230. You should just buy one off of GP. I'm going to just keep it a buck with you. I would love to see the day when these batteries are down to 199. I hope that's where the market is going. I hope this stuff is going to become incredibly affordable, but 1200 watt hours of battery capacity to be able to dump into another power station or to hook up an inverter to is freaking crazy. It's crazy. The doctor prepare without the little smart meter. It's that's 219. Like this stuff is bananas. Now, I I have to impress upon you, and this is not whether you use my links or not, this is not an urgency thing to boost my whatever, because it's not a whole lot of coin that you get from this affiliate stuff. You really have to be doing this stuff at scale to start to see a whole lot of money. So your boy is not getting a whole lot of coin from this. I don't know what it is, but it's something crazy low. But for $219 for the, this is the bigger style battery. It's not the mini, but this, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't want to be the dead horse, as they say, but this is a good look. And the point that I was getting at is I don't know if these price trends are going to continue, which is why I was kind of urging. Because I don't know if on Black Friday you may have similar sales. But this stuff could be hitting sale prices that they may not hit for another whatever if they ever go on sale. You can never know, but I just wanted to put that out there because that's how my brain thinks. I'm sitting here looking at these like, man, $219? Even at $300, the joints was like, that's $0.33 cents a watt hour. So at $219, that's like probably like 20 cents a watt hour or something crazy like that. You can't beat that. And like I said, we're going to talk about some charging options. This is the Power Queen. I have one of these as well. This is the mini joint and the mini is 230, much like the Redodo, I believe. Yeah, the Redodo is 230. This one is 240. And these are the mini style batteries. They're so compact. Um, let me just show you. Oh, snap. Let me. That messed all up my white balance and all of that. But this is the Redodo. How thin that is. Oh, it's not light. How small that is. I got other batteries around here, too. Um, actually, I got one right here. Let me show you. It's going to be heavy, but I'm going to show you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to show you. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay. Jeez Louise. Okay, here we go. Holy moly. Ah. <laughs> I don't even know if that was effective. But look at this one. Right? And then look at this one. This is the older style. 
You can see how thick that is. You can see how big that is. Holy moly. That smaller joint. Like, and the reason why it's so incredibly dope to me is because I have three of that bigger style of battery. And I just come to, I, I appreciate it the size for the watt hour capacity so much so because you look at something like a ecoflow river with all of its components in it this is like 300 watt hours compared to something like this can i get that right oh ooh, 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 ooh. geez <laughs> and then you could do the side profile Ooh, ooh, ooh. So that's the smaller one. I was already like this joint with its thousand watt hours, twelve hundred watt hours of capacity is about the size of an EB seventy for a lot of us who have the EB seventy. So you're getting twelve hundred and eighty watt hours, right? Those batteries were typically about like three seventy nine, three forty nine, two ninety nine. And then you have a situation where you have, like, I appreciated that so much compared to the power stations because I could easily grab an inverter, throw it on there, or just go straight battery, what is it called? Ringlet. You could just go ringlet to, actually, I could just show you. This is the... Power Queen, you go ringlet, see on top, to 12 volt adapter, pop in one of these joints. I don't think this battery is charged at all. Let's see. No, it is. I thought it was. I thought it had some power in it. It's saying 13 volts. So it's at 13 volts. Um, and then I could charge a laptop from this. Throw this on the table, 1,200 freaking watt hours, 12.8 times 100. So Grand Acres, remember we was talking about volts and amps. So volts times amps is how many watt hours you get or how many watts you get. Now, so I already appreciated the 1,280 watt hours in these bigger batteries because granted, they're bigger. But they're about the size as like other power stations that only have 700, 600, 500 watt hours in them. So then they have this smaller one, have the 1280 watt hours in it. And then to see these kind of prices, it's bananas. So hopefully I'm doing a, a good job of conveying that to you. <laughs> All right. This is something similar. This is the normal style battery, Power Queen. I'm gonna put all of these links. I'm gonna work on it in between tonight and tomorrow and put all of these links into this uh, this description. I started out with some of the power stations. Um, so we got Power Queen. This is the normal size Redodo for 229. You can see they're talking about lowest price in 30 days. Okay, we got that one, we got that one, got that one. I wonder if the Dr. Prepare batteries, let's see. If they have more of their other batteries on sale. Let's see here. So this is the one with the screen. It's for $269. And you could drop that down to $240. That's interesting. Okay, cool. And then this is the one with the hub. How much is the one with the hub? Yeah, I ain't there on that one. <laughs> Three, four hundred dollars minus $20. That's not a good, that's not a good look. Cause that little hub. Like, nah, that's not worth a whole, what, $100? Like, they're tripping. But anywho, even if, you, even if you don't quite understand how to use it, I promise you, if you get one, I can help you with how to use it. We'll figure it out. Even if I don't have the video, I'll create, like, a super just normal video and send it to you directly if you need to, like, just know how to use it and what to do with it. And we're going to talk about it a little bit in these next couple of devices so we talk about the batteries and then we start to get into these lfp chargers this gets a little more interesting but what i want to point out to you is that i bought lipo specific chargers you don't have to buy those but if you want ease of access just get an lfp charger keep it simple you can see here 
you got your wall outlet battery clamps this one is rated at 15 amps 12 volts 12 times 15. i think 12 times 20 is like 300 so 12 times 15 150 150 that would be 150 plus 75 to 25 so 225 watts i think i did that right um so you'll be able to charge that that battery at 225 watts per hour and this joint is on sale for like 43 dollars. now there's some 20 amp chargers there's some 10 amp chargers and then you just do 12 volts times the amps to get how many watt hours or watts you're going to put into the battery so i like a 20 amp charger but something to keep in mind is if you go with a 20 amp charger you have to have a power station because if you're going to charge a battery from a power station you have to have a power station that can do at least 500 watts 300 watts you may get by on it but um so if it needs about 300 watts which is what the 12 point whatever and it's actually technically it can be like 14 volts times the uh the amps because it's lfp lfp has a higher voltage but you can get one of these little charges for 50 to 100 dollars 70 dollars and charge these batteries up now how you get the power out is what i was talking about earlier i didn't see any deals on those particular things but you can do battery clamp to 12 volt socket i've been having issues with my battery clamp to 12 volt sockets or you could do a ringlet terminal to 12 volt especially if you only have one battery i have multiple batteries so i like the um options of the clamps because then i could just pop a new battery in and keep it moving i don't know why i'm not on here <laughs> but uh this is another one this is a 20 amp i'll show you the style that i have in a second but this is another style battery that you could charge this one is um for a bunch of different chemistries i also like this one because you it can do 12 volts at 10 amps or 24 volts i'm sorry 12 volts at 20 amps or 24 volts at 10 amps grand acres if you're still around this is kind of the same principle it's just the numbers change to get you to the same amount of watts going in it's 53 dollars. you get this you could charge your battery up no problem we could deal with how to get the the, the, the power out of the battery at some point but 300 dollars. you have basically created and, and this is applicable to you too for $300, you have basically created a situation where you could take and get at least 1,200 watt hours into a battery for storage purposes to use later under $300. I think that's an incredible look, 1,280 watt hours. And then if you think about it, so you got 1,280 watt hours, um, a battery charger for about $50 to $70. You're looking at about $300 and you've kind of come up with two thirds of your power station. The next thing you need to just figure out is how to charge your battery from solar. If you want to go that route, there's ways to do that and how to discharge your battery in various ways, whether it be an inverter. So you could say, get like a best tech inverter, 500 Watts for like maybe 80 bucks, maybe a little more than that. So $400, you got a way to charge the battery. You got a way to use the battery and you got the battery itself for $400, 1200 Watts. I think that's a good look. Okay. This is the style of battery charger that I have. Well, not this style, <laughs> but this is, this is kind of, that looks a little janky actually. So this is a 12 volt, 20 amp charger by EcoWorthy. I don't know about these little ringlet terminals. They look sketchier than the mug. I'm used to the battery clamps, but you can see this is $76. So this is not my favorite. I don't like the way that this looks. It looks a little bumper clap. I guess it's not bad. Maybe the wire rating is what matters. This is more of the style that I'm used to, but this is a smaller one. This is a 14.6 volt. So remember I was telling you the 12 volt is not really applicable I mean, it is 12 volts technically, but because LiPo batteries sit at a higher voltage, it's actually 14.6. So you got 14.6 times 3 amps. This will charge a battery at about 45 watts, and you can see the price is significantly cheaper. I just wanted to show that there's a couple of different options out there for being able to charge these batteries if you wanted something a little slower. I wouldn't recommend going that slow, but... So even when you see here, 14.6 on the lifetime charger times 10 amps 
that one's a $67. But if you have the ability to go up to the 20 amps, right? If you have like the money, I would recommend that because you could get 10 amps for 70, but you could get 20 amps for probably like 80, 85, 90, worst case, 100. So you get double for $30 more unless you need less power going into these batteries because you have a limited power station output. But you think about that all powers R600, that thing has a 600 watt inverter on it. So it's like, it would not be a problem. And it could take in up to 300. Well, the new one is 220. The old one is uh, 300. Now, I don't know if the upgraded version dropped the solar down as well. Actually, let's check that. Let's see if we can figure that out. What you say here? Okay, that's not it. UPS. It doesn't show me there. So let's see if we could find it somewhere else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Solar 220 watt max input. So I think if this is the upgraded version, I'm hoping that it would be a little quieter. They say super quiet, but it went from 300 watts of solar power down to 220. So that's interesting. 220 watts is still dope. For that's such a small device. So, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. Let's see what we got here. We went through that. Looked at that. Talked about that. You got the Redodo, $63. I think I, do I have a Redodo? But I have this style. Now, to be honest, I like this style clamp more. No, that one's the one I like too. Um... I actually have it right here. Let me show you. Come on. So if you can see the difference in the style clamp. Now, this is just be, being picky, but after having multiple devices, you kind of learn what you like. So see how that one's just a little more rounded versus what I'm about to show you. I prefer that style I just showed you over these. So these have like grooves in them. Now you can also go, I guess I'll bring it back. You can also go that way. That's an interesting approach. But then you have that groove right there and then you got the secondary groove. So it's interesting to get it, put it on the battery. Sometimes they'll get on and they'll like slip tighter. So they'll be on there and they're fine. And then they'll slip and get tighter once they start moving electricity. That's what I noticed. Or maybe the grip is just tightening because it is. But this is my best tech inverter i bought it off of the marketplace this is a 500 watt inverter i run about 400 watts through it to charge the ac 200p and these wires get really hot but you can see that the wires are still they're still intact and they still look good and all that jazz so these are not my favorite style clips and i have a battery charger that has this style of clip and i'm not a big fan of it but you know they get the job done it's just like i said you, you learn your preferences when you deal with multiple devices um live times charger you can see it still has those clips that i like that one is 109 dollars with a 20 dollars coupon so this is what i was saying you could get a 20 amp charger which is going to be 14 times 20 amps 14.6 times 20 amp. let me do the math on that real quick 14.6 times 20 292 watts so even a 300 watt charger should be fine a 300 watt power station should be fine to run this uh, charger to charge your batteries up. It'll take you about four to five hours to get those batteries full if they're depleted all the way. But if you don't deplete them all the way, all the way, then you'd be fine. Um, I don't know if this was worth it, but it caught my eye because I have situations sometimes where I need like just short cables to kind of extend a parallel connection or something like that. I just caught my eye. I think we're kind of getting to the end of things here. That's for sure. If I'm looking at the accessories, this was interesting. I think this is kind of like the uh, the device that less stuff, more freedom, living in the van life sent me. I have one of these. The only thing that I don't like about these devices is because it has so many Dang, I'm not even showing the screen. Um. <laughs> okay, let's go back. I was talking about this MC4 cable. 
like $10 for three foot. That's a little costly. Let me think about that for a second, because I could get 20. It's one of my favorite cables, the Renogy 20 foot 20. It's the 20 foot 12 gauge. And it's typically about $22. Now that's really affordable, really affordable. It's affordable comparatively because HQST, Bouge RV, they'll sell 15 foot 12 gauge cables for like, um, they'll be about $20. So I always go with the Renogy 20 foot. And then I feel like, well, I got five extra feet for a similar price. And then I could take and cut the cables, which I've never done, but I still buy the longer cables. So that's a dollar a foot typically. And this one's nine dollars for three feet. So it's not that great a deal. But like I said, I often have a need for a short enough cable. But then in that situation, I would much rather just buy the 20 foot from Renogy, which is it's not back ordered, but it's not prime eligible in fast shipping. It's prime eligible for free shipping, but it'll come like if now it's if I ordered it, I would have had it by then. But right now, typically it'll be like, okay, if you order it today, you'll probably get it like October 27th. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about me. Instead of ordering something and just getting it at that time, I'd much rather wait, wait to see if I could order it and get it in two days. So I'm silly in that regard. But what I was talking about here is these cables are cool. Less stuff, more freedom. Living a van life recommended something similar to this to me, if not this one. Now, the one thing that is a drawback to these is I don't like weight on my ports, especially barrel connectors. So once you plug this into a joint, you kind of get into a situation where you have to like take your other stuff and push it down. And then you have this kind of plugged in and then the cables are like hanging off the edge like that. Uh, I, I have a situation right now where I put like a stool under my wire so that the wire just lays kind of flat while the other wire is going into the power station. That's kind of how, how I have it set up now because I don't like stuff hanging off and that's what it does. So this is a good option, but I also don't like the weight that comes as a result of that. But you can see it has XT60 Anderson. Probably 5521, 5525, 8 millimeter, maybe like 6.3. Um, yeah, you can see here 6530. That's what it is. And then you got 3135, 5521, XT60, and then you got 7909. So it's an interesting little joint. I actually bought two of these today. <laughs> it's funny because I kept it here. They only had two in stock, and I bought the last two. Because I'm in a situation where I'm thinking about putting more panels in a series parallel. I don't have a realistic situation where I would use that right now. But I've been thinking about buying maybe a charge controller or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But um, remember I was talking about earlier about the AC200P that I can't put 1,200 watts of solar into it because that's kind of a waste. But if I had like an AC200 Max, I would absolutely add eh, 900 watts ain't that much better. So it's not great. But anyway, I have a bunch of situations where um, I could use a couple more parallel cables. Actually, if I give the panels to the guy and I give him the two panels and the EcoFlow, the OG River, then he's going to need a parallel cable. And I don't want to give somebody something that, oh, yeah, you got to order parallel cables, especially because he's new to solar. Because that stuff will just sit around. I kind of want to put something in somebody's hands where they can actually just get to using it. You know what I mean? I may even buy an uh, extension cable as well. I'm not sure if I'll do that, but I thought about it. Um, these are some connectors. The price is not great. Bouge RV sells them for eight, but it came to mind uh, because it's two pairs for 12 or two pairs for 13. I think Bouge RV sells them for $8 for a pair. And this is another style cable for less than 20 bucks you could get a whole bunch of connectors for your different power stations so and if you're still around this is applicable to you because you're saying yeah i want xt60 <laughs> so you would have this you would get xt60 and you get a bunch of other cables i'm not saying you need this but if you started to get like different um power stations then you would have some a cable you could always rely on this is coming to handy 
when I have issues with cables and I just need something to keep the party going because nine times out of 10, whatever I have, I can kind of find something on here that'll work with it. So that's been, that's been very useful actually. I think that's it for solar. I saw this, this is interesting, just a power device. I would much rather see what Anchor is doing these days. I did come across something really cool that I want to show you guys. It's cool for a techie, not necessarily cool for solar, but sometimes I share techie stuff with you guys. Now they say this one's 128 watts, but oh, it's actually, wait, who makes this? Because they're talking about GAN, that gallium nitrate joint. It looks just like the anchors. So you got PD, quick charge. I don't want to sit there, but 20%, $30 is, is pretty good, period. But they talk about, they throw around these 128 watt joints, but I think it's just 65. So yeah, you could do 65. Oh, that's not bad. Well, I don't know. You got to look at, you got to find, in these situations, you got to find the display joint that shows you what it can do in all the scenarios. So USB-C 1 max output, boom. And then when you get down to USB-C 2, if you're using 65 watts from the top, it'll do 45 watts. I actually may get one of these because typically what happens with my cable, my joint that I have now, first of all, I have one of these break on me. I had, this is a RAV power joint that is rated for 90. You can get, I think, up to 90 or 100 watts on here. But if you use both of them at the same time, you get 45 and 45. So I would like to be in a situation where I could get 65 and 45. And this is really what power stations in mind because sometimes I charge up. Now are we back? <laughs> oh man, my AC two hundred P died. Let's see. Hmm. Thank you. What's up, family man? So is audio back? I see yes, no audio. <laughs> Say, <"Ruh> -oh. <laughs> hey, can reject you over there in the cut? <laughs> oh man, y'all funny. I appreciate y'all hanging out. That's what I gotta do to find out y'all here. I gotta turn my 
camera off and lose sound. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So my AC200P died. And I think when that died, my hub, which shouldn't have lost power, so audio should have stayed working, but I think it lost power. I just joined a few minutes ago. Oh, okay, that's what's up. I dig it. Um, I'm in a wheelchair. I'm thinking about hinging my two 100 watt panels, hinging or hanging. Folding panels are outrageous. They're not. They're not as bad as they used to be. I mean, the the mainline ones are really um, expensive. You know, EcoFlow and Blue Eddy. But what do you think about those flex panels versus, um, I got you, Kimber Jack. I appreciate that. Hopefully it's a good one, you know? <laughs> oh, that's what's going on. So I lost light there too. So I feel like very bright here. So maybe that light is having an adverse effect on, dang, it's 12 o'clock. Holy moly. Jeez, I need to go to bed. <laughs> All right, let's see here. This is another little novelty item. Um, these joints you can put on your solar panel so you can see where that little shadow lines to be able to line up your panels perfectly towards the sun. But here's the thing about that. Just to keep it a buck, the sun is moving all the time. So it... You can line it up for a little bit, like Ann was saying. You need to move your panels a couple of times a day. I mean, you get good power, and it's good to know how to perfectly line your panels up with the sun. But that sun is moving all the time, man, all the time. So it's hard to keep it really on point. Ah, shoot. Okay. I was talking about this, and what I'm going to do, just to let y'all in on how your boy's uh, mind works, I'm going to see how much the anchor joints are during this prime sale. And if they're close to the price of this, I'll probably buy the anchor just to be on the safe side. But this price looks really good uh, for something like that. And I need another one anyway. I think that's where we got cut off and I lost power. So that was interesting. Um, this is something I don't know if this price is good. I don't care for solar powered joints i just want them to be usb um so that they can plug into uh something like this now this particular one does not work well with my usb lights feels like i'm talking really loud um but i'd rather usb than have solar panels on my lights but i'm weird either i'm weird for not being into them or you're weird for being into them, but I saw them and I was like, that's interesting. Now, not necessarily to buy these because I think y'all should shop around and see what the better price is. Maybe there's some ones that are better charged, but it was an interesting thing. And then this is like that little bit of tech stuff that I was telling you about, which I think is very compelling. Now, USB-C, I feel like, well, we may not all be familiar, but I have used USB-A extension cords in the past because I've wanted certain situations. I've had like a folding anchor panel, um, which was my actual first panel, my first solar panel, not the Renogy 50 watt. I had an anchor folding panel that I would run a USB-A extension to to get that power inside of my house. So it's akin to how we do now, you know, we have a, a panel outside, we run a wire into our house so that the thing that's getting the power can be inside and not outside. I used to do that with my cell phones or my power bricks, and I would run that USB-A extension cable in to get power. This particular joint catches my eye for a bunch of reasons. I don't even think about it in terms of uh, power stations, but if it can actually transmit this amount of data and this amount of power, it would actually be really, really good and very versatile for extending USB-C to USB-C cables to get power into power stations. It would just be incredibly versatile. I could maybe use it for some other situations. I already have tried this particular thing, which is a USB-C coupler. Let me see if I could get you. A... You see USB-C there and it's USB-C on the other side which is actually really cool. Come on, come on, come on, get our 
let's get our focus together. It helps out in some situations. And it's just cool to have. And I think I would want this, this cable here for the same reason. It's talking about video, fast charging. It's one foot. So it's not very long. I actually would have liked it to be a little bit longer than that. But stuff like this is really interesting to me. And that is really a wrap on the deals that I found out. You guys know Wayne was talking about the Home Depot deal. I think Sharp Farmy sent me something with Jackery. Let me kind of grab that real quick because I think it's kind of close to what the, let's see. I think it's very close to what the Amazon deals were, but it could be different. Let me check that out real quick. And then we'll button this up. Let's see. Oh, it was an Amazon deal. Let me check it out. Copy link. Jump over here. New tab. Okay, this was just everything. <laughs> All right. So I would not buy any of Jackery's older products. This is um, this Jackery panel right here used to be like two ninety nine, so it's good to see them go to the normal space of two dollars a watt. EcoFlow and Blue Eddy have been kind of out of control with that as well. Okay, so you got the Jackery one thousand Pro for six ninety nine. That's interesting. I wonder what that's hitting for. And then you have the two thousand Pro for eleven ninety nine. This is what um, EcoFlow and them be doing. They will have a 200 watt panel for 499. It's like, dude, it should be 399. Y'all are bugging. So I imagine this has to be LFP, right? Is it LFP? It better be. Shoot. Because Jackery, man, they be pulling the number over on people. Okay, ultra long lasting, last 10 years. I don't know. 10 years for one week. One usage a week. The low cell, man, what are these people doing? This doesn't, okay, there's a newer model. That's crazy. So now we write, I don't think these bigger ones are LFP though. See how Jack we be playing games? I'm, I'm looking for the sign, guys. I, I hope I'm wrong, but it doesn't look like these new ones are LFP. Ultra long standby. <laughs> I don't see anything that points me in that direction. Let's see. Capacity, max capacity, recharge time. Wait, maybe this is it. Maybe the pro is the joint that has the LFP. And it's $899. I feel like, man, charge Jackery. This should not be this difficult. <laughs> if y'all are interested in Jackery, I ain't the guy for you because I'm just getting caught up myself. And it seems like they only have LFP on one of those joints. And if so, then they wildin' because people are going to assume that their whole spread has LFP now. So that's just, uh, and then they have, man, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. All right, let's see. Um, all right, I'm going to watch this. Love that gadget. I appreciate that. Flex were outrageous at one time. I will look them up. Yeah, they're getting cheaper. They're getting they're getting to be like I talked about the Renogy. Renogy 100 watt. It's a it's on sale for $106. All Powers has a 200 watt flexible panel. That's pretty affordable as well. I had one of these and lost it, so I made one out of plastic bottle and piece of black tape. I don't know what you're talking about. What's up, Byron? That's a good idea for that cable. Yeah, I like that. That's a good deal. I dig it. I'm a fan. Jackery Plus is LFP. All of Jackery Plus. First of all, it's good to see you, Prepping on the Creek. It's always good to see you, sir. Prepping on the Creek has a channel. He makes content as well. Um, Byron, too. Um, all right. What else? 
I was considering Jackery, but no, no LFP. As far as I can tell, so Prepper on the Creek is saying the plus is LFP, but I'm 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 out at this point. I don't feel like figuring these people out. Okay, Jackery one thousand plus eight ninety nine. And it's like, I hate to give up, but I am. It's been two hours. Y'all have been beautiful. You have a good night. Uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Probably not, but I'm going to get up here. <laughs>